the example of the micro to macro economic transition is a really good one to get a sense of how coarse graining works. So let's take an example here to give you a sense of what we mean when we say that we're going to coarse grain a system. We're going to simplify it. We're going to renormalize it in the language of physics. So let's take just a partial description of the entire economy that we have today. So here's just a sample example. You know, James got a job, Mary was promoted, Sally was laid off, Harold took parental leave, Xavier retired, and Sunshine went back to graduate school. Well, if you're a macroeconomist, really all you care about is that three people lost their jobs, or rather, in fact, four people lost their jobs and one person got their, uh, one person got a job, and so the net change in employment was minus three. And so what the macroeconomist has done there in the construction of her variables is in fact taken a complicated story and made it a lot simpler. And in doing that, almost always the following thing happens, which is that they confuse or mix up two entirely different descriptions. So if we imagine instead of James getting a job, it was Sunshine. Instead of Mary getting promoted, it was Sally, right? And Mary, in fact, got laid off. Harold, in this case, didn't take parental leave. Xavier kept working instead of retiring. And James got sick and lost his job. And in fact, no one went to graduate school. These are very different descriptions at the micro level. But in fact, from the point of view of the construction of the macro level economic variable, the number of people who, who, who were uh, unemployed or employed at a certain point in time, those two descriptions are identical. And so what coarse graining does, in other words, is merge states of the world. We we'll use a lot of different terms over the course of this series of lectures. One term is equivalence classes. So you could think of these two descriptions are in the same quote unquote equivalence class. And that equivalence class, in fact, contains all the descriptions of the world in which the next change in employment was minus three. Okay. You can also think of these as, if you're a computer scientist, as irreversible mappings, right? Mappings that um, are onto, but not necessarily one-to-one. -one. If you're a physicist, you can even think of them, if you like, and we'll talk about this a little bit in the final part of this uh, set of modules on renormalization. If you're a physicist, you can also think of these as irreversible transformations. The entropy of the description, the uncertainty of the description has now gone down. These two different micro-level descriptions both map to the same final story. Okay. The macroeconomist, is another way to put it, the macroeconomist is much more certain about the world than the microeconomist. Okay. So let's try to get a more intuitive sense of coarse graining, and in fact, we'll give you a sense of how coarse graining plays out in something that we understand very well, which is the representation of images for the human mind. So this is a woodcut here um, from John Tenniel of one of the uh, episodes in Alice in Wonderland. Actually, it's from the second of the two books, Alice Through the Looking Glass. And you can see Alice here playing with a ball of yarn and her kitten, Dinah. So what I'd like you to imagine us doing here is simplifying this image in different ways. And what we're going to do in particular is coarse grain the image in the following fashion. So imagine dividing this image up into grids and then at each grid point here, okay, if we were to zoom in to this digitized version of Tenniel's image, if we were to zoom in, I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit on Dinah's ear here, if we were to zoom in we'll see, okay, a little patch of that image. And what we're going to say is for each of these patches, we're going to represent them now, instead of all of the individual details, the square is white and the square is black. Instead of all the individual details, what we're going to do is we're going to have that patch just take a vote. Okay? In fact, it's going to do a majority vote, right? This is going to be like the Electoral College of Images here, okay? And so that image there, it turns out, is majority black pixels. And so it's going to coarse grain to a single chunky black pixel. And in fact, we're going to go grid square by grid square here, taking all of the complexity of the image within that 10 by 10 chunk and compressing it down to a single answer, black or white, one or zero. And in fact, if we go right next door on that image, here's a different part of Dinah, different part of Alice's cat. And what we can see here is that even though this image patch at the fine grain level is different, the two descriptions in the different parts of the image are different, in fact, our coarse grading majority vote will represent them identically. Another way to put it is, okay, if Vermont goes Democratic, it's basically because everyone in Vermont is Democratic. If Pennsylvania goes Democratic, there's a lot more non-Democratic votes in that state. 
But because of how we're going to coarse grain the system, in fact, we're going to say that Pennsylvania and Vermont both like the Democratic candidate equally. So what happens when we do that? Well, here's an example. This is majority vote coarse graining. And so what we can see here is that on the left hand side, we have the original image. And on the right hand side, we have something that kind of looks pretty much like what Alice sort of looks like, but we're missing quite a lot. Here's another case, and this is a different rule. In this case here, instead of taking the majority vote, I did what's called, at least in the literature, and this is a term that was uh, invented by the physicist Leo Kadnoff when he came to do this kind of coarse graining, not on pictures from Alice in Wonderland, but in fact on images of atoms being spin up or spin down, and we'll talk about that in a later module when we come to the icing model. Okay. What Leo said to do is, in fact, don't even bother to average over that grid square. Just take the point in the top left corner and have that defined. And in fact, you can see in this case here, if we use that decimation rule, that same patch of data now gets mapped not to black, but in fact to white. So what I've introduced you to here is two ways to simplify an image, two ways to coarse grain the image. And of course, different images will now coarse grain to the same thing. I can make many microscopic changes in Tenniel's original illustration and still get back the same final image of Alice. Okay. Of course, the microscopic changes that my image is insensitive to, or that rather my coarse graining of the image is insensitive to, the microscopic changes will depend upon the coarse graining algorithm that I choose. So if I do the majority vote, then I'll be able to make some changes that won't show up. And if I make the, in, instead take the uh, decimation coarse graining rule, there's a different set of changes that I can make at the microscopic level that will leave the system unchanged. 